Right, we get a couple things to take care of in this P5. I feel like this prerequisite chapter is covering a lot of information. So I hope you're taking your time each day and digesting it. So enough about that. Um, very, very brief about linear equations, um, slope intercept form. We've covered all that stuff. And what it goes back to is you're trying to find out solutions. Uh, so solutions are when y is zero. Uh, so for this one, we're talking uh, not just about intercepts. We know the y-intercept, but the x-intercept, that's going to be the thing that uh, we tie into solutions. Uh, so if we uh, subtract here, we know we're going to be at 5 halves or 2 and a half. Okay, most importantly, that is going to be paired with 0, right? Because remember, that's an ordered pair that we're going to be talking about. So a little note here that unless you're a horizontal line, you will have a solution as far as linear. Most of the time is going to be spent on quadratics. I'll try and review things as quickly as I can, but also not leaving out anything. Uh, a couple things we know it's quadratic because it's x squared. It's uh, got a positive right here, so we know it's going to open up when we get done with it. The next thing we know is the c value, since this is already in a standard form. The c value is going to be 0 with negative 3. That gives us a y-intercept, so I can put that on the graph before I even do anything else with it. A um, couple things you might realize already is that we can factor it and we can get x, and x factors of 3 are 1 and 3, and we do want positive 2. So I'm going to go positive 2 and negative 1. It is equal to 0, so that gives me solutions of 1, and it gives me a solution of negative 3 as we go to solve each one of these set equal to 0. All right, so in between 1 and negative 3, we know the middle is going to be this negative 1, We know the a value is 1, so that means we can make the assumption we're down at negative 4 and back up, and that gives us our parabola. But how are we going to work with that? Uh, remember, in between, we can deal with uh, negative b over 2a. So we have negative 2 over 2 times 1. So that's that negative 1 we were looking for as part of the vertex. If we plug it in, right, negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3, that gives us the other half of that vertex. So we got 1 minus 2 minus 3, negative 1 minus 3. Look at that. It was negative 4, just as we expected it from that A value. So that kind of gives you the whole skinny and everything going on there. Uh, so I'm just going to try and review some of that over here as well. We know it's going to open down because the negative on the A value. Uh, we know 0, negative 9 has to be part of the graph. So I'm just going to put that on here, 0, negative 9. And we're working with negative B over 2A. That shouldn't be brand new to anybody. Notice b was negative 6, so I'm going to get positive right away. 2 times negative 1, that's 6 over negative 2, which is negative 3. So the vertex starts off at negative 3. If we plug it back in, we're going to get 0, okay, which means we could have factored it um, the way we did the other one. I just figured we have to get this stuff anyway, so let's leave it this way. Okay, so here's our negative 3. Uh, I would need that to also be the axis of symmetry, and if we're 3 to the left, 3 to the right, set, that gives us this little parabola picture. It does open down, it looks normal as far as its width, right? We didn't have any stretch or compression going on to review some of that idea. It does open down, that's the major idea, so make sure we have that. All right, all right, so that kind of gets through some of those. Remember, you could have used your graphing calculator and done y equals. And that's what this is setting it up. Just a quick review. Uh, sorry for my Casio friends. This one is set up for the uh, TI-84. 83, 84, and the TI series. Um, and then we can also change that table so you can take a look at all those things happening. All right, we want to make sure we recall some of our factoring. So if we solve by factoring, notice these are already factored out. So we do x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. So this one's done. We'd still have to subtract 3. So x is also negative 3. So this is the um, zero product property rule. Uh, so this 5 isn't going to carry anything. So I can get rid of that one. Uh, x needs to be 1. And if we solve this one, we're going to subtract the 3 and divide it by 2. Get this motor in a little bit here. When, it, when we take out x, right, this 5 didn't do anything. But x itself does give us a 0. 
the 3x minus 1, we're going to add 1 divided by 3, and we're going to have to subtract 5 and divide by 2, so we start getting our solutions that way. So those were already factored for us. Uh, we have been working on factoring, so hopefully we recognize this first one as a difference of squares right away, so x plus 5, x minus 5. So we know x is going to be plus minus 5. Remember that is two of those solutions. Um, factors of 9, that up to 6. Oh yeah, I like this one. Factors of 9, that's going to be um, 3. We're going to do that one twice. So I get x equals negative 3 and negative 3. I am going to list it twice because remember that means your parabola is going to touch that point. Uh, it's not going to go through it. So it's going to point, point of intersect. Yeah. Tangency, not an intersection. Sorry about that. Can't seem to talk right now. It's not a, not a good habit for someone that's supposed to talk for a living like this, right? Uh, we do have factors here. Uh, we can go through the whole factoring, or uh, 2 is prime, 3 is prime, so we can kind of just guess and check where things need to go. So this has to be 2x and x. Uh, next thing we want is, uh, let's see, uh, do I want to make it into 6? No. So I'm going to put my 3 over here and my 1 there. I want positive, so I get positive 3 and minus the 1. Right, if that seems confusing, then go ahead and go through your factor by grouping. And that's why we did some of that factoring first. So we get solutions. I'm going to take the easy one first, 1 and negative 3 over 2. Uh, the next one, this seems to give kids trouble uh, time after time. Uh, we can't do anything because it's separated, so make it equal to 0. So 6x squared minus 9x equals 0. Now we have a GCF problem because these are clearly not difference of squares. So we got 3x. And then we'll have 2x minus 3 equals 0. So 3x is going to give me a plain old 0. And then we'll have 3 over 2 for the other solution. And then one more. It's a little bit out of order. So we're going to fix that first. And what was I trying to hide here? I was trying to hide x. Factors of 25 are 5 and 5, and they're both negative. So I was trying to hide x minus 5 twice. So we get positive 5 and positive 5. Again, it's a little bit redundant. But for right now, I want to make sure we have that. So when we take a look at graphs and solutions, we understand what happens there, that, that it's only going to touch the graph. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We know it opens up. Okay, so I would have something like this, where it just sits on the graph instead of actually going through it. So anytime we double that answer, that's what happens. All right, still motoring. So if you uh, have any questions or anything or just need a break, this might be a good time before we get into the next thing. All right, welcome back. If you took a break, if not, hey, it's good to see you again. Uh, next section we have is we're going to use square roots. So we're going to solve by extracting the square root. So we're getting ready for complete the square. Uh, so this becomes the 2x minus 1 equals plus or minus 3. Very important in this one because we are supposed to get two solutions. So I do want that plus or minus 3. So we're going to add 1. Okay, so what happens here is you have 2x equals, if it was positive 3 plus 1, you get 4. If it's 2x equals, if it was negative 3 plus 1, we get negative 2. So we have those two situations. Uh, normally, we're going to see this as square roots. So we don't really have to separate them. But since these were integers, we're going to have to work with it just a little bit. So x is 2, and x is negative 1 for those two. Uh, next one, we'll get to our point about having this kind of mess. Uh, we have something extra. It's a 5, so we're going to just divide it out. Right, it's not a perfect square, so I just want to get rid of it. And 8 fifths is not going to be perfect either, but we don't really care. We're trying to get rid of the square without having to foil something. So x minus 3 it is, plus or minus the square root of 8 fifths. And if we need any, any other alteration of 8 fifths, we'll do that uh, together. So all I have to do is add 3 to this. They are clearly unlike terms. That's how we treat our radicals. So 3 plus or minus the square root of 8 fifths. And again, if we need to do anything else to clean that up, we'll address that together in class. All right, not too shabby. All right, a couple more. You can do this. Hang in there. Remember, this was to get ready for what? Complete the square. Here it is. When do I use complete the square? It's your preference when A is 1 and B is even. It can be used any time instead of the quadratic formula, but when this happens, a is 1 and b is even, then we're like, yeah, let's use complete the square because it's totally easier than the quadratic formula. So here's how it works. You want x squared 
and your B term on one side and everything else on the other. So what we did is we subtracted seven, okay? Uh, I like to work down and then back up. So we're gonna work with X. I'm gonna take half of six to get three, and it is positive. I'm gonna square it to get nine. Okay, so I'm gonna work in this pattern where I could work down and then back up just to help keep track of where things are going. And now it equals two. So just like we did in the step above, now we're gonna take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square. So x plus three equals plus or minus root two. And this is, uh, I think, what we're used to having happen. So x equals negative three plus or minus root two. But that completes the square. Okay, that was our preference because we don't really wanna deal with what's about to happen in the other one. Although this one isn't terrible. Right? It was somewhere in between. Uh, but the setup to get started is, is not very pretty. So that's what we're trying to deal with right now. Remember, A has to be one. This is not, oh, well, it'd be nice if it was. It has to be. So first thing I'm gonna do is show that we're gonna divide it all by four. Uh, we're gonna divide both sides, but you know, zero is gonna stay zero. So X squared minus five X plus 17 over four equals zero. X squared minus five X plus blank equals negative 17 over four plus blank, right, whatever I add to one side. We're just moving that 17 fourths over. We're gonna work down and then back up. So here's what it looks like. X, I want half of five, don't really care what it is, and then I wanna square it. Okay, so we'll remember to square a fraction, we're gonna square the top 25 and the bottom fourths. Look at that, 25 fourths. Well, isn't that a little darling little problem right there? because we got negative 17 plus 25, which happens to be eight fourths. I'm gonna scratch that out right away and just say it's two. All right, now we're ready. So it looked like it was gonna be pretty awful, but it's not that bad. So we get x minus five halves equals plus or minus the square root of two. So the last thing we're gonna do, in case I don't have enough colors on this screen, is we're gonna add that five halves. So five halves, plus or minus the square root of two becomes our final answer. Notice these were all real numbers. We didn't get any imaginaries. Don't worry, we're gonna do that before we finish out the prerequisites. All right, uh, so that was an option. I know I've had some students that really like complete the square. Um, makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to reduce as much in the end. So let's see if that has to happen here with our quadratic formula. You must know the formula. If you had me for algebra one or two, you know we sing this thing. So if you don't know it, if you have trouble remembering it, ask me in class and we'll sing it. I'm not singing it right now. All right, so last one. Um, equals zero is an important thing for this question because it's not there yet. So three x squared minus six x minus five equals zero. So now I can identify a, b, and c with the sign that goes with it. So here's what we got, negative b, which would be positive six plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's gonna be positive 36 minus four times a times c. I always encourage my students to put this part so you can see all the signs. It makes it a little bit easier all over two a. All right, that part I could have made six, right? That would have been a little bit easier. Six plus or minus the square root of 36. I see two negative signs, so it's plus 15 times four is 60 and it's over six. All right, so we got six plus or minus the square root of 96 over six. Now keep in mind, I need something to come out of this before I can reduce. So if I don't break down the square root of 96, I can't do anything else until I do that. So what are the factors of 96? I don't know, where would you start? I see a bunch of threes. Uh, about, how about three and 32? Uh, well, that's four and eight, and this has a four and a two. So I get a pair of fours, but I have these left over. So I have six plus or minus four is what I had a pair of. I have six left over and it's over six. Now I'm looking to reduce these items right here to get a final answer. Three plus or minus two root six all over three. Okay, so this extra reduction, pulling things out, this is the type of thing we can not, well, we can stay out of if we use the complete the square, but sometimes it's a mess. All right, so that's our lesson for today's stuff. It was quick, it was dirty, it was all about 
quadratic formula and a ton of things to do with it. Okay, so let it soak in. Uh, think about what those things mean. It took a long time in Algebra 2 to get all those. So take the time to uh, think about it and try some extra problems. All right, peace.